Luke, I am your father. Okay. <laughs> Enough fun. Time to get polishing. The aluminum body of the Airstream is what gives it that iconic look. I mean, whenever you see one, you know it, it looks different than any other trailer. And one of the great things about the aluminum is that you can give it an amazing mirror polished finish. So one of the next steps in our restoration process of our 1976 Airstream is going to be polishing the exterior. As you can tell, I don't have uh, the windows or anything back in. and. I am doing the polishing step kind of, it's going to be in stages, and I'm doing it before I put the frames and the windows back in because I want to get the polishing, you know, right up to the edge to where there's not, a lot of times you see kind of like there's a seams by the, by the frame edges where it's not fully polished. So with that, I wanted to give it just that seamless look and a seamless polish job. So we're going to be talking about how to polish an Airstream. Now, there's a lot of different ways that this can be done, and um, there's a lot of you know good options out there. There's definitely ways not to do it, and um, you know we're not gonna we're not gonna get too much into that. But um, I'm gonna talk to you about the method that I'm using, um, how I'm how I'm going about it, the different tools that I'm using, and today we're gonna start by talking about the rough cut. Now I'm gonna be doing my polishing in basically three different phases. Um, the initial rough cut which is gonna be where you're just, you're getting rid of all the corrosion, all the scratches. Um, you can see this spot right here is what I'm gonna be working on in this video. And this is just totally raw, whereas I've already gotten um, some of it polished up here and you can see the difference. And this is just the rough cut. Um, and it's already got quite a bit of a mirror polish there. Um, so we're doing a lot of work in uh, the method that I'm using in the rough cut. Um, to, to get rid of those scratches and just taking a lot of material off it in this first stage. Uh, then the second stage is going to be just kind of an intermediate, still a little bit of cutting, um, using more of a cotton wheel. And then the final stage is going to be the finishing stage and that's going to give it that final mirror polish. So let's talk about the different tools that I'm going to be using. So kind of the main thing that I'm using to polish is the Eastwood Contour SCT or surface conditioning tool and it's basically a rotary design tool that has a large four inch drum that spins at about 3600 rpm um, so it's on par with your other rotary buffers and stuff like that as far as its speed so you're not going to be going too fast to where you're going to risk taking off too much material or uh, causing any burn spots or hot spots or creating any warping in the aluminum um, and this is just a cotton pad. Uh, it's got basically like a lot of cotton flap flaps in it. And um, this thing works really great at taking off large sections and just really getting that material down um, and getting it a good polish. The next thing we got is uh, it's a DeWalt buffer with the Zephyr Airway buffing wheel and this is the yellow and orange one so this is a heavy cutting wheel and I use this for um, getting some of the really deep scratches and some of those spots um, using kind of a, a more targeted approach with this um, this has got more cutting action than the SCT um, it just doesn't have it just doesn't it's a little bit slower if I was using this over the whole thing so that's why I have a combination of the two. And um, this also is better for doing um, like seams and creases and around the, you know, where the rivet spots are and all that. Uh, it also works good for using the cross cutting technique, which I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, and we got the, obviously the, the safety flanges on it when you're using the airway, you wanna use that as well as the extension arbor because that brings it out. You don't want this thing hitting your arm I've done it and it hurts really bad. <laughs> um, and then we got just a standard rake because you want to be sure to clean your wheels pretty regularly as you're going. Then I'm using uh, Eastwood's, this is just the Triple E uh, Rogue bar. And this is what I'm using for the cutting phase. Uh, I'm gonna be using different polishes throughout the whole process, probably a total of three different polishes. 
Um, and so those are the different tools that I'm using. The first step is going to be to clean the surface because you want to make sure that you get all the dirt and anything like that off of it. For cleaning the surface, I'm just using some mineral spirits and a towel and just wipe it down. Pretty simple. And you can see there just still quite a bit came off. So it's always important that you clean and prep the surface. That can really make a big difference in you know the quality of your polish in the long run. So so we got the surface clean, we got all of our tools ready. The next thing is you want to wear protective equipment because getting the aluminum dust in your lungs and all over your skin is not good for you. So I pretty much make sure that everything's covered. Um, I got a full respirator face mask, uh, hearing protection. It's not terribly loud but a lot of times I like to listen to music while I'm doing it and so this kind of helps you still be able to hear music with the earphones in. So we're gonna get all this on. Um, before I put this on I can't really talk very well. One of the things whenever you're doing this is you want to make sure that you are uh, using enough polish but not too much. So I will generally do you know a section maybe a one square foot load some polish onto the drum, hit it, and then load a little bit more, and then kind of finish that section off. Um, usually after I do probably about two to four square feet, I'll have too much metal built up into the, into the drum, and so then I use the rake to clean it off. Um, when you're using this, you want to be careful not to uh, be too aggressive with the rake because you can tear this up, but I just kind of gently, you know, put it on the rake and kind of go back and forth lightly just to make sure that I'm getting the metal cleaned out of it. Um, with the airway, you can just use the rake like regular and just hit it, um, but you want to be careful with this. One of my concerns with the SCT was, you know, how long these drums were going to last with polishing, uh, especially with having to rake it and um, just the process of polishing because you know these are these are kind of expensive they're about fifty dollars a piece per drum and to be honest I'm actually really impressed by just how well it cuts and how long they last because I've you know I've, I have three of these total and I've been using two kind of simultaneously and I, I've you know I've done quite a bit of polishing and they still have a lot of life left in them so I honestly think that like three of these could get you through an entire airstream so you know it's really it's really impressive I know that they're you know they're kind of expensive but they they go a long way so you know if that's a concern of yours with this tool I would definitely say that it, it doesn't just blow through them and you're not going to be spending more than you would with you know another another method or another product
See there, you can kind of see how the metal is built up in it. You got to make sure to clean that off or it's not going to continue to do a good job of polishing. You can see there, that's, that's it clean, so you got to make sure that you can get more polish in it. If it just has metal in it, the polish won't load into the drum. <clears throat> starting to look pretty good um, there's definitely some of the spots around the rivets and there's a big scratch right here um, it's kind of hard to see so this section is pretty well cleaned up I'm gonna get the airway wheel out now and we're gonna hit some of these spots around the rivets and some of these really deep corrosion spots as well as this big scratch right along here and uh, there's some other spots right here and we're gonna see if we can get those cleaned up and looking a little bit better um, and we're going to be using a cross-cut technique. So normally, whenever you're polishing, you want to be pretty much um, whatever direction the wheel is turning, you want to keep that consistent across the whole airstream. Uh, whenever you have these really deep spots, you can do what's known as cross-cutting, which is where you do an initial pass vertically, and then you hit it horizontally with the airway, and then you go back over it vertically again and that will, um, it takes off a lot more material, so you don't want to be doing this everywhere, but some of these spots where it's really deep, um, it can kind of help them turn out a little bit better. Obviously, some of these deep scratches, you're just not going to be able to get all the way out uh, because you, you don't want to work it so much that you go that far down into the aluminum. Uh, different trailers throughout the years have different types of aluminum. The early ones, uh, I believe up to the end of the 60s, have the all clad coating on the outside. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, I'm not 100% sure on the years. Um, but it basically has more of an alloy on the inside and then a pure aluminum layer. So they polish the best, but if you get too, if you cut too far down into that all clad, you get into the kind of more junky alloy underneath and that can cause a lot more corrosion a lot faster. So you want to be careful with that. You don't want to cut too deep. So um, these. I believe in theory are not that um, and so either way you still want to be careful if you cut too deep you can get into some of the deeper aluminum and it may corrode a little bit faster usually you want to seal it with something I'm gonna be finishing it off with a polish that has a sealant in it so that'll definitely help avoid corrosion also continually keeping it up kept and polished prevents corrosion so doing a maintenance polish about once a year will prevent that as well
um, all the corrosion spots around the rivets is cleaned up and the scratch is reduced dramatically um, and it kind of smooths the scratch out to where it doesn't you know have as sharp edges and so it doesn't hold dirt and stuff in it so it won't be as noticeable so um, yeah the cross cutting method works really good whenever you have some of those tricky spots so we're gonna get the SCT back out and finish up this area and then this section will be done with the first stage <clears throat> job it is quite exhausting and it really takes it out of you especially your back <laughs> for holding that thing but the results can be amazing now with this first stage whenever you're doing the rough cut this is where you're gonna want to spend most of your time and your effort because the thing is when you get the initial cut as good as possible and as much of the corrosion the scratches the pitting all of that out on that first cut then the final results are going to be a lot better because you're not going to have those blemishes and uh, whenever you're doing the other stages you don't have to potentially like go back and fix a spot because you missed it or you know try to fix it with a less aggressive stage in the future so take your time you know obviously people are going to polish it to their to their standard um, not everybody's going to want to go to the extreme that I am with you know hitting all around the, the frames and all that kind of stuff but um, you know if you want to get that that real just that mirror finish without all the you know the spots and the scratches and the blemishes take your time on that first stage so the last thing you want to do is get the mineral spirits and this time use a microfiber towel to remove all of the compound that's left on there you want to get that off because whenever you go to the next stage you don't want any of that aggressive polish compound still on or in the metal because then that'll mess up you know taking it to the next level um, you know whenever you look really close in this you can see the marks from the machine and part of that's because this is a rough cut whenever you go to those next stages it's gonna get smoother and smoother and more like a mirror and making sure you get the previous stage compound out is gonna be key in achieving that mirror-like shine. And there we have it. The rough cut is complete in this section. Um, there's a few spots I still need to finish up. I need to get uh, this window in so this piece is kind of out of the way that got hit by a wheel at one point. So I need to have that riveted and held down. Um, but other than that, everything looks really great. Um, there were some really difficult spots in here and those cleaned up pretty good. Obviously, 
with a trailer of this age, you're gonna have some of those just blemishes and the patina of it that's gonna show its age, but that's okay, that's just character. So um, the only way that you could get perfection is if you replaced every single panel, <laughs> and I'm not doing that. So uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. We got a lot more Airstream videos coming. We're gonna finish, obviously, the stages of polishing. That is going to take a little bit of time because I want to get all the windows and the doors and everything back on it before we do the next stages of polishing and the shell back on the frame. So that could be um, maybe a few months before we see the uh, further polishing videos. Um, but we got lots more stuff coming. If you haven't already, please like the video. Feel free to comment below. Um, if you want to say anything, uh, just leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you come along with us on, on this journey and just everything that we have coming forward in the future. And hope you have an awesome day.